This is a rear end film we done one some while ago on a horse rear end in the yard and the reason why this horse is rear end and misbehaviour is, is, is something entirely different. So if we look at this now, we can see this horse going around these obstacles with no problem whatsoever. Yeah. You can see she's soaking up nice in her mouth on the bit. Then I'll bring her up again and ask her to stand. Whoa. Yeah. I've only got my rubber bit in, so I'm doing it, you know, as softly as I can. But she's the one that just cannot do this. She can't do it because she is as doesn't have the patience to do so. So we've got to teach her to have patience. So I'm asking her to stand still here. Um so there we are on a slack range, she's standing still, that's fine. So you think, well, that's good. But you see this, look. Now, I don't want that to happen to us. Obviously, I don't. But she's got to learn to stand still. What if exactly the same thing happened at a road junction? This is pure temper, frustration. I don't want to do it. I'm not going to do it. So I could smack her a punish her. That's just stupid. Notice her back foot now, gone at rest. Yeah? Now, all stone stand like that with its foot at rest. If it's not accepted the fact that it's got to stand still. If you see me on there, not even talking to her, not doing anything at all, just sitting there quietly, right? And she wants to come back. I'll let her come back a little bit, let her move. She's rested her other foot now. But can you see where I'm not bullying her, I'm not smacking her, I'm not doing anything at all other than sitting there. Now, the other thing we've got to be a bit careful of here is there's some midges flying around. If I think those midges are really upsetting her, then obviously we've got to go. So what I've asked her to do now is to come round. I just want to show you this bit. So she's coming round. Now she would quite happily, if you watch her, she'd quite happily go up and do all them bits again. You know, no trouble at all. If you watch, I mean, just watch her go through here. Is she uptight? Is she cross? Is she frustrated? Is she anything at all other than just going round the arena? She's not even trying to race around. She's walking around nice and steady on a slack rein, easy as you like. She's not worried about these, any of the obstacles at all. I mean, just look her, push them out of the way with her head. So all my training is done, but she said, I'm not standing there, but she doesn't mind doing that. She doesn't mind me turning her away from the gate, if you see what I mean. So I'll bring her back again after doing that and say, so now you've got to stand still. That's all I'm asking you to do. No one's going to hurt you. No one's going to whip you, kick you, smack you, do anything to you, but you must stand still. Because as I say, repeating myself again, if she jumped forward as she did, yeah, now this is, I'm not waiting here. I'm going to move around. So you see her backing it up, pulling it forward, doing everything other than what I asked her. So we turn around again, but we don't let her go around the arena this time. We turn her back around here. That's it, put her back where she was and have the patience to stand there with you until she listens and do what we asked her to do. I've got enough, no foot on the brake, but she's, Standing there happy, you can see I'm not moving about. Obviously, I've got a foot on the brake, so if she was dancing about, I'd be moving, wouldn't I? So there you are, standing there now, happier, yeah? And that that you saw just back then, when she's pouring the ground, runs forward and smashes herself against the fence. Just think how dangerous that would be at a junction, because she decided, I don't want to stand here. Or if she'd done it, you know, when someone was coming past, just walking in front of the horse and you was at a showground or something, walking in front and she decided, pouring the ground and then smashing forward like that, you could have serious consequences. So what you've got to do with horse is 
give them discipline, steady, slowly, constantly, keeping the same rules and regulations all the time. And as you establish them in the horse, as they accept it, the better they will be. All horses are different. What I'll do with this horse, I wouldn't necessarily do with another. I've got a loose contact, the horse is standing there, I've got no um, brake on or anything like that to restrain it. So what, what we want to do now is know when to stop, know when to start that, that particular lesson. There's certain times when you think, yeah, this is right. So I was going around the arena, everything went well, I knew she was eager to come out last time we were out in the arena, so I thought, right, okay, this time you're going to stand. That's what I want you to do. So that's the next phase of the training, if you like. So I'm making her stand, but I'm not making her, am I really? I'm conjoling her into it. I'm just restricting her from moving forward, but my hands don't move. I don't yank her head back and hold on to her. If she chooses to move forward, she walks onto the bit. So she's told herself, oh, if I do that, I walk onto the bit, fill the bit, no good. Standing there now, she's chilled out, that's lovely. It takes a time to do that. It takes a lot of experience. People say to me all the time, we see your films on YouTube and you only show the end bit. Well, what I've shown you here, I hope you find it interesting, but there's no great secret. That's the, you know, there are no secrets. The point of these films is to show you what I do in this situation. And it's no bad thing to you to do this with your horse. Like for instance, you're leading it out of the stable, does it bulge, does it push? Don't let it do it. Spend the time, you're far better off, you know, spending an hour with your horse getting them to do one thing, like stand still on a lead rope without stretching down to bite grass, without doing anything just to stand there because you've asked them to. And once you've achieved that one little piece, that one little section, and they do what you ask them to do, rather than being forced into it with some sort of dually head collar that's gonna put pressure on their nose, something else that puts pressure um, on their head in some way to restrain, no good. Do it gently, but firmly, and say, yeah, I do want you to stand quiet that's exactly what I want you to do. I don't want you to do anything else. So don't get cross, don't get upset. I will still be with you and I'll still want you to do this. So if you learn this lesson now, you'll find life is just like children, really, in so many ways. You can see she's got a, you can see how her hips drop there, for instance. You can see that she's got her leg at rest. So that's good. That's absolutely lovely. You can see there one hip higher than the other. So she's got her leg at rest. She's just sitting on a bit quietly. She's not pulling against it. She's not rearing, jumping into the fence as she did. I mean, that could have been, just that jump into the fence could have been awful, you know. Um, I mean, I'm on the reins, but with someone else on the reins, not knowing how to, to tackle that, might have panicked, started hollering, screaming, yanking the bit, and you could have made the, the situation far worse, far worse. But as we're, we are here now, this is absolutely lovely. And it's boring. Now, all I've done, I've not hit her, I've not kicked her, I've not done anything to her, punished her, I've done anything other than stand still when I asked you. And it, that seems like such a silly little soppy thing, but it's the basis of every part of my training. That is the basis of it, that you get them to do one thing for you, yeah, and then you give them a little bit of praise when they've done it, give them a little pat, not sweeties, definitely not treats, that's just ridiculous, because they're looking for that. They've got to be doing it because I asked them to, not because they're going to get a sweet. That's no good. Not for me anyway. Other people might do it lovely if that's what they want to do. I watch things on YouTube and I see people with pouches on the side of them, and I say, you see the horse comes to me. Well, of course it comes to you if you've got, in your pocket you've got, or your pouch you've got, you know, a bit of corn or, you know, food to give them, of course they'll come, I mean, that's obvious, isn't it? I mean, they try and pass it off that they've got this great bond with the horse and he's doing what he wants. Do it with nothing, do it with no reward but your voice. And then your voice becomes so important to a horse and it becomes the horse's life. 
I can get this lesson across and we both leave her respecting me and me showing her all the respect in the world and giving her the time to achieve what I'm asking her to do. But it's all this work here, what I'm doing here. That's what it's all about then. It's what I'm doing here with the horse. You know, this stand still, this back up when I tell you, this whatever I ask them to do. Sometimes, you know, you think I'd follow a pattern and get them to stand still first, wouldn't you? Sometimes, no. Wouldn't be that at all. Sometimes it might just be to, on the word, back, they back off a head collar and a loose lead rope. So they walk back from me, they leave me and walk backwards and stand still. It might take me hours to get that. But that particular horse, if I get him to do that, the rest of it will be pretty easy in comparison. There's the horse doing the arena, perfectly happy, no problem with the arena. Comes to come outside the arena and will not stand and acts totally stupid, or not stupid, but I'm going home, I'm not doing this, I'm finished with this now, we've done that, come on, let's go, that sort of attitude. I'm not standing here, so then pouring the ground, lunging forward, smashing into a fence. Just imagine what would happen if you give in to that horse. We're right outside the gate now. Now we've got a little bit of the old, oh, I'm just about fed up with this. No good. I shall make her come back. She don't want to come back. I should just ask her again. And then when she comes back, I shall tell her to stand there. Yeah, because no, you're not going to do what you want to do. Just imagine, we was just at the roadside, weren't we? We'll just, you know, look at that bit again. So we're at the roadside. If that had plunged forward in the same way as it, you know, as it did into the fence and a van was coming or a lorry or a car or a cyclist, just think for one second what could have been. Here we are again, pouring the ground. She's jerked forward. I say, no, you're going to stand there. And she will stand until she accepts it. I'm still standing. Lovely there. That's good, but Mel's now opened the gate, can you see? But the horse has not attempted to move. That is massive. Then I'll just get in the gateway, straighten it up off that gate, that's it, and then stand again. Now that must be, unfortunately, or, you know, tormenting her, but she's coping with it, isn't she? She's dealing with it. And that's, that's what we're looking for. Leg gone at rest, can you see? So I'm absolutely over the moon. Over the moon with the horse, you know, the pony. Lovely little pony. When she left us, well, she was an absolute dream, you know, to drive anywhere. She had the confidence, she had the discipline. We all have to have discipline. The trouble is, discipline's a dirty word in this day and age. And we all discipline, clean your teeth in the morning, get out of bed, go to work, you know, do your washing, you know, whatever needs to be done has got to be done. And these horses have got to be safe on the road and happy to be there and comfortable. And that's how you get it. This is it in a nutshell, you know, these little lessons that you persevere at and just get them to do without any corporal punishment at all. That's the most important thing. No corporal punishment. Don't want any of that nonsense. Eating them, hurting them and that's just absolutely crazy. And these lessons, it doesn't matter if you get a horse to stand still on a lead rope when it's told so that you can walk to the end of the lead rope, ask it to come towards you, then say, whoa, and it does that. If this horse had been, that had been done at home before it come to us, we wouldn't be doing this. We wouldn't be worrying about it. There's another film on there uh, uh, that we've got, a horse called Benny, that would explain it to you in a nutshell. Uh, you know, what we do when a horse is brought up properly and how much easier it is to train. Now, just, I don't know, an hour ago, 45 minutes, whatever it is, we had all that trouble with her jumping into a fence and acting stupid, and yet now, here she is, standing in the yard, happy, She's done what I want her to do. 
you know, at the end of the day, I can only do it with their cooperation. And I wouldn't have their cooperation in achieving this if I hurt them, would I? They'd be doing it out of fear. Well, that's no good and never was and never will be. Absolutely tip top perfect. I'm asking the little girl to come back now. Can you see her coming back? Beautiful. And I'm asking her to go up again and hold it. Yeah. And then that's absolutely lovely. To my way of thinking, perfect. See her coming back there again. Look, super. This is what I call horsemanship, is when you can get contact with horse like that and achieve what you've seen in real time while, while it happened with me explaining, and there's the horse standing there as quiet as a lamb. So there you are. That's a big, big lesson for a little pony. Massive lesson. She's done marvellously well. I'm chuffed to bits, and there'll be a vast difference in her next time we drive her.